Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kayla and welcome. So I am finally sitting down to update y'all on everything about the wedding. I know I've been promising y'all this video, but it has just been crazy the past few months. But we are gonna get into the venue that we chose, the proposal, my wedding dress details, the ring, my diet, exercise routine, and even some of the stuff that I'm DIYing in order to save some money. So we're gonna get into all of that in today's video. that it is insane how much time and energy goes into planning a wedding like I have the utmost respect for wedding planners at this point I could never do it as a career but I'm such a perfectionist and such a hands-on person so I decided not to hire a wedding planner because I knew I would be doing a lot of the details myself anyway however I am hiring an event coordinator that's gonna come on at the end of this month so about six months prior to our wedding date and so she's gonna take over all of the vendor information and help me manage all the vendors which I'm hoping is gonna free up a lot more time for me so that I can you know not only create more content for y'all but so that I can also start documenting the whole wedding planning process because I haven't even had time to do that and I want to be able to have videos that we can Darrell and I can look back on just for memories and you know I might even upload them to my YouTube channel for y'all to see as well but anyway so today I just sort of wanted to sit down and chit chat with y'all and just update you on everything that we've been planning so far so I guess I'll start at the beginning which is the proposal. Darrell and I have been together for 14 years. Yes, I know. If you want me to do an entire video on like the backstory of our relationship, let me know because I feel like that would take up too much time in this video. So fast forward to the proposal. Of course, I knew at some point he was gonna propose because we've already talked about it. I mean, at this point, we felt like we were sort of married anyway, you know? We knew that we were soulmates. We knew that we would spend the rest of our lives together. And so it was really just a matter of timing. Back in 2019, he was already talking about like rings and stuff. And then in early 2020, COVID hit, the whole country shut down. So that sort of put things on hold. Fast forward to 2021, what I didn't know is that he had already started planning out my ring. He was working with a jeweler one-on-one -on -one to build my ring. And so I didn't know that. So he was actually starting to build the ring almost a year prior to the proposal. And he actually had the ring in a coat pocket, like in the box, obviously, in one of his coat pockets in his closet for like an entire month before he actually proposed. He was just waiting for a weekend that he would get off because his job's super strict and they work almost every weekend. So he was just waiting for that perfect moment. Um, and so on the night of the proposal, I had no idea. Like I told you, I knew that at some point he was gonna propose, but we had sort of put it on the back burner because of everything going on, you know, in the world with COVID. And so anyway, he was taking me on like a surprise date night which is not unusual he takes me to the Le Meridian Hotel in downtown Houston and we go up to the little rooftop area which is like a little lounge people you know you can go up there and sit and take photos of the skyline it's very beautiful well we get up there and then I see our friends and I'm like what so I go over there to hug Candace one of my friends and then I when I turn around Darrell's already on one knee and so of course I just bust out in tears I'm in shock I'm surprised He's like down on one knee giving this little speech. <laughs> But it was like everybody was so excited and loud I could barely hear him. He had to tell me what he said after the fact. But anyway, so he, you know, popped open the box, asked me to marry him. Of course, I said yes. And the rest of the night, we just sort of chilled out with our friends, went to dinner and, you know, celebrated. But I had no, like, of course, I told you, I knew at some point he was going to propose, but I had no idea that it was going to be that night. So complete surprise. It was perfect the way he set everything up. So it was the perfect night. And it's just one of those memories that we are going to cherish and hold on to forever. So since we're on the topic of the proposal, let's go ahead and talk about the ring. Like I said, he had been planning it out and working with a jeweler for months. The only thing I told him back in 2019, I do remember, is that number one, I want it to be a complete surprise, the proposal, everything, because I love surprises. But I told him as far as the ring goes, I want it to be super minimalistic. That's just my style, I guess, when it comes to jewelry is super minimalistic. So I told him, you know, the main thing is I love a good 
solitaire. I don't like all the halos and things like that around it. I think that they look great on other people. It just, it just doesn't reflect my style. So that was really the only thing that I told him. As far as like researching the diamonds to get the right color, you know, colorless and the a good clarity. He did all of that on his own. He put a lot of time and energy into studying the diamonds and all of that just to make sure he didn't get ripped off, you know, or whatever. And to make sure that he got the best quality diamond within our, our budget. And as far as the details go, the center stone is a two carat oval diamond. It is E color and VS2 with a two millimeter band. The total carat weight is two and a half carats. But I am completely obsessed with my ring. I love how much it sparkles. It's literally one of the prettiest diamonds I've ever seen in real life. And I love that he kept it minimalistic so that way I can stack it with any style wedding band. And as far as our wedding bands go, I actually have a close friend in the neighborhood. Her name's Amora. Hey Amora. She's going to be designing our wedding bands from scratch. So we're going to be able to do some customizations to it just to really personalize it and make it that much more special. So I'm really excited to get started on that. Okay now let's talk about wedding dresses. Now y'all know I'm not going to show y'all the picture of my actual wedding dress. No spoilers until the day of the wedding. But about a month after the proposal, my best friend who's my matron of honor and my family drove in for three days and we all went bridal dress shopping. It was so so much fun. We went to four different boutiques. I tried on all different types of dresses. I'll try to include some photos here for y'all, but I tried on ball gowns, A-line, fit to flare, mermaid, all the different styles and in different price points as well, just so that I could see the difference in fabric and details based on the different price points. But it was so good to try on all those styles because I had my mind made up on the look that I thought I wanted based on photos that I had saved from Pinterest but I ended up going with a style that was completely different than what I originally envisioned. So that's why it's so important to just go try everything on, you know, because a model who's like five foot 10 is going to look good in anything. Me, I'm five foot three. So there's certain styles that I can't pull off. So anyway, I ended up finding the style of dress that looked best on my body type. And I ended up getting my actual wedding dress from Winnie Couture, which is in the River Oaks district of Houston. If you're familiar with that area, Area, but I am in love with my dress. It is stunning and I'm not really a crier but once they fixed it all up which by the way let me explain that when we went to Winnie Couture the first time around I tried on different styles and immediately I knew I loved their quality and the detail of Winnie's dresses however there were certain things I liked from this dress and that dress but there wasn't a single dress where I loved every single part of it so they were able to mix and match certain features that I liked from all their different dresses and put it into one dress for especially made for me and then there were other features that I added on to it that I didn't see on any of the dresses but it was the fact that they were able to customize the dress based off the features that I wanted to suit my taste and so ultimately once they had everything sort of rigged up on my body I couldn't even move because they had things pinned everywhere I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm not a crier but I burst it out into tears. It was just a moment, you know what I mean? And so that made my friend burst out into tears. And then the, the two girls that were working there, which by the way, amazing customer service, uh, they started tearing up and it was just like a, a whole moment. But anyway, I am obsessed with my wedding dress and I cannot wait for y'all to see it. And I'm super happy with how the whole experience went. And I am super happy with Winnie Couture, their customer service. So if you are in the Houston area and you are planning on getting married anytime soon or even in the future, definitely go by and try on their dresses. So the next big decision we had to make in the whole planning process was our wedding venue. Now we researched and toured lots of different wedding venues in the suburbs of Houston and there were a lot of beautiful ones but it really came down to, you know, number one, which one was in our budget and then from there, which one fit both of our styles because even though we do have a similar style for things like that, we also also have differences as well. I know that I posted two of them to my Instagram stories back in I think it was November of last year. One of them is called the Springs which is a beautiful venue but it's more rustic farmhouse. It didn't come across that way in my stories though. It looked more modern farmhouse 
And so I ended up not choosing that one because I don't really like the rustic vibe. I'm more modern. And so the next one we went to was the Luminaire and that one was just straight modern. It has a lot of black and brown tones, a beautiful outdoor space, beautiful bridal suite, groom suite. Of course, the reception area was stunning. The chapel was stunning. And that was another big one for me was the chapel because even if we decide to have an outdoor wedding, of course, you run the risk of it raining that day and then you have to go in and use their indoor chapel well that was the hardest part was a lot of the venues they would have like a gorgeous outdoor space like the springs the rustic farmhouse but the rustic farmhouse didn't even have a dedicated chapel you had to have the indoor ceremony in the reception area and I just didn't like that either um, so for me the fact that the luminaire had a beautiful indoor chapel just let me know that whether we decide to have an outdoor or an indoor wedding it's gonna be beautiful beautiful regardless at the Luminaire. So that's the one we ended up choosing. I'll post some pictures here for y'all, but the way that we're gonna decorate it, the colors for the wedding and things like that is just gonna be stunning. So I don't wanna give too much away in terms of the overall vision for the ceremony and the reception, but I will just tell you that our color palette includes blacks, champagne golds, pops of that rich jewel tone emerald color, Y'all, if everything works out the way I have it envisioned in my head, I cannot wait for y'all to see it. Okay, on to the vendors that we chose, and this is what's been taking up most of my time. I've really been getting into Photoshop and creating a lot of vision boards, you know, deciding on table linens and chargers and decor, floral colors, all of that takes so much time. So starting with our caterer, we went with Churrasco's, which is like an upscale Latin American cuisine. And y'all, we went in for our taste testing the other day the food was just so good so full of flavor everything we tried was good which I feel like is a good problem to have but it was so hard to narrow down our menu so we picked two hors d'oeuvres uh, two entrees one salad type as well as two yeah two sides and I don't want to give away our menu just yet, but I will just say that one of the hors d'oeuvres that I picked out is these little mini taro root tacos that are stuffed with like a pulled pork. Oh, y'all, just delicious. And I think that's one of the things I'm most excited about is for all of our wedding guests to try the food because honey, it is so good. I'm telling you. I wish all of y'all could be there just to try the food. <laughs> and while we're on the topic of food, let's talk about the wedding cake situation. So at the beginning of the wedding planning process, one thing that was in the back of my mind was, am I gonna be able to find somebody that can do a gluten-free wedding cake, but something that actually tastes good? Well, that was settled whenever I found cakes by Gina. Gina, the owner, has celiac disease, so she definitely had gluten-free options. But not only that, she mastered the gluten-free game. Because when we went there on, Satur on that Saturday for the taste testing they did not have a freshly made gluten-free sample for me um, and so Gina was there and she was like this is not how we do things we're gonna ship out a freshly made gluten-free cake to your house the same day that we bake it now keep in mind their bakery is like a good 30 40 minutes from our house but a few days later they delivered two freshly baked wedding cakes and these were like they were pretty big um, to our house. And if you saw my Instagram video, you would see how smooth and how moist it looked and just how delicious it looked overall. But she gave me one that was vanilla with a cream cheese filling and then a chocolate one with a cream cheese filling. But oh my gosh, I'm not even a chocolate fan and the chocolate one was delicious, but the vanilla was just on another level. So I was so happy with how good it was. It was moist, it was spongy. It really did not taste like it was gluten-free at all. So I'm super excited that I'm gonna be able to do one layer of our wedding cake gluten-free. So we have four layers on our wedding cake and the bottom layer is gonna be gluten-free. And that'll be the one that Darrell and I cut into for our photos. But I really don't feel like any of our wedding guests are gonna be able to tell the difference because Darrell taste tested it and he said he could not tell the difference, that it tasted just like the real thing. So I am so excited about the wedding cake and the fact that I am going to be able to do one layer gluten-free. So if you are in the Houston area and you have to eat gluten-free like me, Cakes by Gina, they can do a full gluten-free wedding cake or just gluten-free layers. As far as our table settings, we went with events to remember. So they're going to be doing our linens, chargers, napkins, and silverware. And I'm so happy with them because <laughs> we were in the showroom for like two hours just staging things, you know, mix and matching different linen, linens, different textures, layering 
wearing the chargers just to get that perfect vision because you know sometimes you can put it in Photoshop or Canva and create a vision board but until you see it in real life you really don't know if it's gonna look right together so I'm just so grateful for them allowing us to go into their showroom and really just take our time to stage everything we were able to get that custom look without breaking the bank so I highly recommend events to remember for your table settings if you're in the Houston area so as far as florals go we have chosen an overall color palette for the florals but we've not quite finished designing the structure for the ceremony backdrop and we're not quite done with the overall look of the reception now I was debating on whether I should show y'all the floral color palette because I don't want to give away too much but I think I am gonna go ahead and show y'all a picture which I will insert here so this is sort of our overall floral color palette lots of greens and ivories with pops of blush so I'm very happy with the overall look of our floral color palette now I have finished designing the look for our head table and let me just tell you it is stunning like it's Pinterest worthy I can't wait for y'all to see that one but the reason the head table was so important to me is because the dance floor is gonna be right there in front of it so you know our first dance our father daughter mother son dance and pretty much the entire night of everybody dancing on the dance floor that head table is gonna be in the backdrop of all of that so for me the head table was probably the most important part of the reception in terms of design now of course one of the most important things when it comes to wedding planning is making sure you stay within your budget and it's so hard not to <laughs> because everything in the wedding industry is so expensive and so tempting right because you want to go all out on your special day but you have to check yourself and sort of just remind yourself okay wait hold on you know you're going a little you're, you're being a little too extra Kayla so there's certain things that I've DIY'd just to save money to make sure we stay within our budget and one of those things is our save the date cards the first thing we had to do was take our engagement photos so that we could use them on our save the date cards so instead of hiring our photographer that we're that we've already hired for our wedding day and for my bridal portraits we were like you know what let's just take them ourselves. I mean we have all of the camera gear that we need that I use for my food photos for the blog and for you know the videos for YouTube and things like that so we have all the professional cameras and the lenses that we need the only thing we don't have is a photographer so Darrell had the genius idea of getting his best friend who's one of the groomsmen his wife who has a, just a little bit of experience with working with professional cameras but it's just more of a hobby of hers and so we met them downtown Houston I already had all of my vision boards of the different poses we wanted to get the locations I had everything planned out and so Darrell just made sure to set up the camera all the settings the aperture the shutter speed and all that in between each uh, shot he, he set that all up for her so really all she had to do was make sure she you know got the right angle and that she clicked at the right times and like making sure it was in focus and that sort of thing which is still not an easy thing to do she did an amazing job I think we ended up taking about a thousand photos that day uh, and we got probably 30 of them that were really really good so I'm super happy with that I feel like 20 to 30 photos from any photo session is a really good amount in my opinion so anyway we just made a day of it we had a good time hanging out with them in between uh, shooting photos we took them out to dinner that night as a thank you so it was actually a lot of fun and in terms of editing the photos of course I already have experience with color grading and color correcting from all of my food recipe photos so I just popped them into Adobe Lightroom edited them color graded them did all the stuff to make it look super professional and voila we had 20 to 30 professional engagement photos and we literally saved hundreds of dollars and once the photos were done it was really just a matter of finding a template that I liked so I went into Canva which of course is free and I found a template that I liked I plugged our photos in changed out the text customized it a little bit and then I ordered the prints on cardstock paper from Prints of Love. And I got 100 prints for $90, which was the best deal that I found. I searched several different websites. And I was going to print them myself, but it would have ended up costing more money for the cost of the ink for our printer. Uh, so I just went ahead and ordered prints online. And then here's where I really saved money. I ordered some vellum paper from Amazon. I cut it to a 5 by 7 And then I found this template on Etsy that was only $4 
dollars. Of course, I customized it with our information, and then I just pinned it with one of those, um, like a thumbtack type of thing. I think that's what they're called. Anyway, like a gold one. And then I found this personalized address stamper on Amazon. I also bought the wax seal stamper with the W and then gold glue gun sticks to do the little wax seal. And I'm so happy with how that turned out. I feel like that wax seal just fancies it up a little bit. But all in, I ended up spending a total of $160 for everything, including the prints. And whenever I went and price pointed it on minted.com for that exact layout with the envelopes, the wax seal, the vellum paper, everything, it would have cost me about $550. So that's just two of the ways that we've already saved money by doing things ourselves. I know there's going to be more DIY stuff along the way. For instance, I just purchased the centerpieces for our cocktail tables instead of going through the decor company for that. And I know for sure that Darrell is going to build me a sign for our acrylic uh, welcome sign. So he's going to build that, which is going to save us a few hundred dollars. So anyway, let me know if the DIY stuff is something that you want me to include in like a future wedding update video. And lastly, in terms of my wedding diet and exercise routine, I will admit I haven't been as consistent with my exercise routine these past few months just because I've been so busy. But starting this month, I'm going to be way more consistent because we're literally like six months out from the wedding. So I know, you know, I got to take it more seriously. Seriously. But my little sister, who's a college athlete, she plays softball. Um, she's put together a 16-week workout plan for me, so I'm going to be way more committed and dedicated starting this month. So anyway, let me know if you want a video on that. I can do a whole dedicated video just on my exercise routine and show y'all what she has me doing each week, some of the different exercises and things like that. Comment below if that's something you want to see. And as far as my diet goes, y'all know I already eat really healthy anyway, but there are a few changes that I am making. I'm including more protein into my day. So that way when I do start my exercise uh, program, I'll be able to build muscle quicker and look more tone overall. My goal is to really have tone arms so that way it'll look good in my wedding photos. <laughs> I'm also including more fresh juices and smoothies into my diet. I don't drink as many smoothies during the winter months. So now that the weather's starting to warm up, I am including those back into my diet. I normally drink more smoothies, but I'm trying to include more juices as well. I do notice when I drink a lot of green juices and beet juice that my my skin just looks more clear and glowy overall and I just feel more vibrant so I am including more of those as far as natural supplements go I am including some extra supplements into my normal supplement routine such as kelp which is great for your hair so I want to make sure that my hair grows I'm trying to grow my hair out for this particular hairstyle that I'm gonna do for my wedding day and then also I'm including astaxanthin which is good for glowy skin so anyway I'm gonna do a dedicated video on my wedding diet to show you y'all certain foods that I'm starting to include more of into my weekly routine and certain supplements that I'm taking as well just for overall beauty you know glowy skin thicker fuller hair all that good stuff well all right y'all that is it for today's video I hope you enjoyed it and I really just wanted to sit down and update y'all and sort of give you an overview of everything that's been going on behind the scenes with the whole wedding planning stuff hopefully I'll have more time on my hands after this month uh, once I get my coordinator on board and I finalize all of my vendor details and that way I'll have more time to produce content for y'all and like I said sort of document the whole wedding planning process for our memories and to possibly upload to YouTube if that's something that y'all want to see but anyway I do have a new recipe video coming out very soon so stay tuned for that and then after that I'm gonna do a video on my wedding diet like I said earlier I'm gonna show y'all some of the foods I've been eating more of as well as some of the supplements I've been taking but that's it for today I'll see y'all in the next video bye